about our homes and we always think about landscaping mine really needs a good landscaping, <laughs> new, new landscaping plants we know are a great option yeah that usually means things like hostas or flowers like daylilies or peonies i have such a hard time with that word <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Plenty of other plants though you can choose from to add some color and interest to your lawn and garden. DLK shares some of his favorites. G'day everyone. There's definitely popular plants that end up just about in every single landscape. You think of shade, you think of hostas, you think of a flowering shrub, you think hydrangeas. Wildly popular and with good reason, they perform in the garden. But there is a whole host of fabulous, artistic, beautiful plants that you can incorporate into your landscape, especially if you want something a little bit different, something that's not kind of in every landscape. You know, those cow forests or grasses, they can get a little bit old or a little bit tiresome looking. So this morning I thought I'd highlight some of my favorites of underused plants in the landscape. And I'll tell you why they're underused and maybe you should incorporate them into your garden at home. They might actually be a little bit trickier to find, but if you come to a good garden shop like the one behind me and ask a few questions, you'll probably find them at your favorite local garden shop. So let's take a look at some of my favorites. Let's go down here to a very prostrate ground cover. That's a sedum, and I'll tell you why they're probably a little underused. Um, ground cover is very, very popular. The sedums though, especially the prostrate ones, work really well in between cut stone walkways, in between boulder walls, retaining walls, or anywhere you want something cascading. If you're thinking about making a green roof on top of your garage or on top of your home, sedums is the go-to plant and a great, a great plant to incorporate into your landscape in those spots. The next one here is helium. It has a very kind of airy habit, um, probably looks a lot like coreopsis. Coreopsis is one of those popular ones. This one here has a little daisy-like flower, blooms all summer long, and is a proven performer in the garden. Two types of lamb's ears, really, really cool plants. Firstly, this regular lamb's ear, just because of the texture, the, the leaf itself is almost as soft as a puppy's ears or a cat's ears, almost just can't stop kind of patting it in a sense, and has that really silvery foliage which illuminates at night. It's a great plant to have around the patio. And this one here is a cotton candy lamb's ear and has a really stunning pink flower, very reliable, and also makes a great cut flower as well. It actually lasts quite long in the garden. This one poking up here, all, really all the honeysuckles, this particular one here is called Gold Flame. Absolutely wonderful, has one of the sweetest nectars. So if you're looking to attract hummingbirds, this is probably the number one go-to hummingbird attracting plant. Probably a little underused in the landscape. Grows super quick too. If you want to cover a fence, and go over an arbor. This is a great plant, a lot quicker growing than shrub roses and some other climbing vines. The next one here, blueberries. Oh, by geez, by jingo, by crikey. A wonderful landscape plant. Of course, at this time of year, you get all the, all the rewards of the fruit, but in the spring has a wonderful little flower. And these leaves actually are a, turn a brilliant fall color uh, in, of course, in the autumn. So you get the spring bloom, you get the sweet reward in summer, and then you get some great landscape fall foliage. Uh, just make sure you plant two of them uh, for the fruit. Uh, variegated Jacob's Ladder, probably an underused um, perennial that does well in shade and can take some sun as well. This little, um, it's called like Tiarella or foam flower, has a very delicate flower, great for shade, and is also a great ground cover. You're looking for a ground cover in the shade, Tiarella is a very popular one. One of my favorite summer bloomers up here, Galadia. There's a few different varieties uh, of Galadia, but again, loves the heat. So if you've got that hot, dry spot, Galadia is the ticket. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Spirea, and this isn't your grandma's Spirea, and I, Probably a decade ago, 20 years ago, I'd say this was probably one of the most overplanted plants, but almost now underplanted. This one here is called Double Doozy. And what, it, what that means is for you in the garden, it actually blooms multiple times. You cut this back a little bit, it'll keep reoccurring uh, blooms. Double Doozy, it's a brand new variety, check it out. Um, probably Spirea's kind of got one of those bad names, but can come back, should come back into fashion. Hypericum here, actually, this is a great one, it has a yellow flower. It's not in flower now, so we won't talk about that one too much, but a great underused shrubbery. Uh, perennial Gypsophilia, talking about cut flowers, anytime you can cut flowers and bring them indoors, all that cut flower segment of perennials, probably a little underused. I highlighted that perennial Gypsophilia, so if you want to incorporate that with your shrub roses and make a nice little bouquet, you can have Valentine's Day all summer long. Don't need to wait for February 14th. All the baptismas, uh, great plants, 
have a wonderful uh, yellow or blue type P-shaped flower. And when this gets going, it really becomes a nice mounded bush, um, super sturdy. And this will actually uh, throw up a black kind of pea pod after blooming, which makes it a little attractive as well. Foxglove, another great plant. This one got me excited about gardening when I was a wee little boy. Love planting foxglove. And then rounding out my underused plants for the garden, these two guys right here, the elderberry, they get up a little bit taller, but chartreuse and burgundy, um, great accents in the garden. They look good at, uh, against just about any type of backdrop, whether it's your home, your garage, you want a little screening. Have, both have cream cl clustered blooms and super reliable in the landscape. So there's my little underused plants. Come out to your favorite local garden shop like these. Look at all these folks behind me. My crikey. Everybody's having a crack at doing a little bit of gardening. You can too. Back to you. Bye, crikey. He believes in us. We can do it. I'm gonna, do we believe it ourselves? We're going to work on that. We need Dale to come assist. Oversee. <laughs> Oversee. Yes. There was a time when host, it was just hostas. It was just so easy. <laughs> Have you seen but those he dinosaur makes it hostas? Easy. They're like eight feet wide with... No. No. Okay. There's a people have, I'm like, are these ancient hostas? Have they been growing here since the dawn of time? Because they're so big. If I fell into one, I would disappear. <laughs> <laughs>